Now you have a choice how to get the meat out of the potato. You can do it two ways. We can peel it, which when it's a baked potato, the skin removes very easily. That's on the Idaho. And on the sweet potato, it's working out the same way. So, otherwise you can cut them in half and then scoop out the uh, potato with a spoon. So we'll continue like that and then we'll put it into the ricer. Now the other important ingredient is the fresh spinach. So mine came out of the freezer and as you see there there is some liquid so an hour before you start anything take the amount of spinach which I will put down and uh, put it in a chinois, a strainer, whatever you have and just let it sit there. We want this as dry as possible and we're going to chop it up. So the spinach, we just go about chopping the spinach up. Chop it up fine and if you find after you're chopping there's still a lot of moisture on the board but that's really not moisture, that's the oil that we sauteed in. Then you can strain it again. So now we'll take the uh, spinach and I'm getting everything mixed up in here, all the seasonings into the bowl, everything here because we don't want to over mix the potatoes in here because they're going to come out gummy. So we'll also put the onions that we sauteed in there. the garlic and the salt, sea salt and black pepper just mix this up well because when we rice the potatoes into that we really don't want to mix it too much and then we'll test out a small piece so we take the potato ricer and just put the potatoes in there. Sweet potato, doesn't matter what you do first. Now sweet potato is much more moist than the... Uh, so we're going to make the test. make sure that it works before we go about breading it. And we're not going to waste any potato either. This might have been easier if I did it when the potatoes were warm, which I know I should have done but I didn't. Whatever's left here, I'm not going to lose. I'll just chop it up, the rest up with a knife. Okay, so let's get that through. Now we gently mix everything. And don't over mix it, just mix it thoroughly, folding it, just if you were making if you were folding something into egg whites, not to overdo it. Now like I said, sweet potatoes are wet even though it was baked. So I already feel this mix isn't stiff enough. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add just a little bit of breadcrumbs to it. I won't even test it yet. But I like the ratio of spinach to potato. A good amount of spinach is in there because it's spinach and potato. It's not 
potato with a little spinach. So I'll taste it and then we'll fix it up. I'm going to make a uh, potato and spinach uh, cake with some fresh basil. You know, I don't always think of these things. Uh, they don't come out of my head, these recipes. I see what I have on hand, I go, let's see, you know what? Two of the items I have. I have many containers of my tomato sauce. I leave in the freezer. I have a big freezer. And I made a big bag of fresh spinach when I made my recipe for how to cook spinach. And I save it in a container. Look, it's beautiful, green. So I have these things on hand, which makes it easier for me to... And then I had some... I saw a sweet potato and a baked potato in the basket on the counter. What can I do? So I go online and I look at different recipes for... I type in potato and spinach, potato and tomato. And then I go, you know what? We're going to do this. But I'm just going to add a little sautéed onion and fresh garlic to it. And the basil wasn't in the recipe, but it's got to work out well. And when the plate is finished, you'll see how pretty it looks. So what I'm using is uh, pan plain panko breadcrumbs. Most every supermarket has it. Uh, fresh spinach that's been sautéed. Fresh basil. But you could also use the uh, basil uh, puree with the garlic that I've made. And I keep that in the freezer, but I had some fresh laying around. An egg, and instead of just using white potato with the spinach, I go, you know what, let's be a little different and put sweet potato, white potato, cake. This is different, and that's what I like to do, different things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to saute the onions and the garlic in some clarified butter or olive oil to your preference and then we'll go about mixing everything together and the only reason why I didn't mince up the garlic is because I it's nice when you're biting into something you don't taste the garlic and maybe on the next bite you get a chunk of garlic that's what I enjoy but you can mince it up fine if you like so I'm going to soot I'm using the clarified butter which I had made. I put it in the microwave just to melt it a little. It'll give me the flavor of the butter, but not the burning. And uh, I'm doing this for the taste. Nothing tastes better than butter, but use olive oil. Less fattening. But sometimes, well, if you like the flavor of good olive oil, go right ahead. But there are times when you need that butter flavor. So this will sweat up. We don't have to brown it. And that'll take a few minutes. And when that's done, then we'll proceed. Now you can leave it translucent like this. Or you can go for a nice golden brown which will of course change the flavor and I'm going to do that so I have a high flame now and we're going to get some color here but notice how the butter isn't burning because there are no milk solids in there that's the benefit of using uh, clarified butter if you want the butter flavor So that's on a high flame, and we're just going to let that brown. Oh, one very important item, didn't mention the sweet potato and the Idaho potato have been cooked either in the oven or in the microwave, the way I did it, instead of boiling, because we want the meat to be as dry as possible when making a cake, which we're going to do. If you boil the potatoes, you wind up having too much moisture in there. And then you might have to add breadcrumbs to it. 
And I really don't want breadcrumbs on the inside. I want potato and spinach. Oh, well, that's pretty good. If you notice, we're getting nice color and the butter isn't burning. Clarified butter can withstand high heat. So that's enough. We'll just shut that off. And we're going to mix this in after we rice the uh, potatoes. Beat up the egg, mix everything together, taste it, season it, and then go about making the cakes. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, just beat up the uh, egg slightly. Whenever you make something like this, you put it together and you take a very small amount of it, like a, a teaspoonful, and you put it in a skillet with whatever you're sautéing it with, just to test it to make sure that it's going to hold together. So when I do that, this one egg I'm assuming should be enough. And if it's not, then I will add a little bit more. So the basil we're putting in without cooking it. I want to see the green on the inside and the flavor will be there because this item is going to get cooked again after it's breaded. Well, I added two-thirds a cup of panko breadcrumbs to the mix. And this is what you want. So you can form it nice and stiff. And it's tasty. And then, as I said, you got to test it before you completely finish it. So I took a little bit. See, it's not even sticking to me. A little pancake without breadcrumbs on it just to make sure the flavor is there and it holds together. So we're going to saute that. It's on a low flame, medium flame, in the same pan that I sauteed the onions and garlic. And we'll color it on both sides and then we'll taste it. You know, it's one thing making the mix and tasting it, and it's another thing cooking it, because the flavor changes a little. You know, you don't even have to bread this mix. If you want to keep away from so much breadcrumb, you could just make it like this. But I will, okay, this is the way it looks this way, and I'm not going to use flour, egg, and breadcrumb. I'm going to just make the patty and touch the panko breadcrumbs and then saute it. Now this is cooked already, so it's not necessary to cook it a long time. Just want to give a little color. That crunchiness is nice. In another minute I'll take this off. What do we have? We have a, a miniature cake. And you can cut it with a fork. It doesn't fall apart, which means you'll be able to put it in the panko and nothing will happen and there it is now we'll just taste it mm-hmm sauteing in the butter helps nice you taste the sweet potato which I love and many people do the regular potato the basil flavor and of course the fresh spinach now I'm going to put my tomato sauce or your tomato sauce, whatever sauce you like, red on the bottom of the plate. Mmm. Very nice. So we'll work on this right now. So I put some clarified butter in the skillet, which you don't have to. And I'm using a number 30 scoop. I don't like them too large. So there, I'm going to scoop it, tighten it up, flatten it down, put it 
put it in the panko. Turn it over. Pat it a few times, get a little more in there. Because the panko is pretty, and when it browns, it has a nice golden brown. Opposed to regular breadcrumbs. Now right into there. So now you go about setting all of this up first. Breading everything. And then filling up the skillet. Now I'm going to make one without it. So it's up to you. Of course I know which one is going to have a better appearance and that's going to be the one with the panko. But if you want to avoid using more breadcrumbs, and we'll see how they look. So let's see how we're doing. And the yield, <laughs> I'm very surprised that this mix is making a lot more than I expected. Which is always good to have more. You could put this mix in the freezer too. Nice golden brown, but as far as appearance, the scoop size is the same. But when you put the breadcrumbs, of course it, it's larger, but without the breadcrumbs, it's very nice. Less breadcrumbs is better, but the panko are nice and crunchy. So, how do you serve it? You first take some hot tomato sauce, either mine or yours, under the item. Why? Because it's breaded. And that's two, one of one style, one of the other. And a little garnish, we'll put some fresh basil, not chopped up, just sliced a little bit on top. And there you go. And then you put over here, whatever else you're having, a piece of chicken, a piece of meat, but there's your potato and spinach, cake, with a nice fresh tomato sauce underneath. What could be better? And this mix makes a dozen. So what am I going to do? It's too many. I'll cook them. And then we'll probably eat just two and two tonight. That's four. The rest I wrap up and put them in the freezer. No problem. And they'll be perfect next time I need them. Well, I'm just about finished with the last five. And another way to saute also you can use like half olive oil, half clarified butter. That's what I did for this last uh, half of it. And there they are, the last ten. And uh, do yourself a favor. Don't use a tomato sauce like a ragu. Make sure it's a good one. And really you should make your own. Use one of my good recipes for tomato sauce, or your own. But don't use um, a can like, I'm not going to use the brand name, canned tomato sauce. Enjoy.